the name of our notes today is naming ionic compounds. What we're going to try to do today is some kind of clear understanding about How do we name these things? What do we call them? Sodium chlorine, sodium nitrogen oxygen, copper oxygen. How do we name them? What are the rules, the conventions for naming them? Because chemists all need to speak the same language. So that's our topic for today. How do we do it? How do we name them? begin with, we need to know which elements have predictable ionic charges. Elements with dependable ionic charges are going to be the elements in the representative groups of the periodic table. One, two, not the transition metals, as we've already seen. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so go ahead and get your periodic table out for this, because you are going to actually write on the periodic table. So take it out of its page projector, so that you are ready to write some numbers down on them. All right, I'm going to go through this pretty darn quickly. We'll go into much greater detail in the middle of the year. This is for naming and writing compound purposes only. Group one. Okay, so that is everything in representative group one. They're in group one because they've got one valence electron. Eight electrons are stable. So what do you think energetically it's going to do? Do you think it's going to gain seven electrons to get the eight? Or do you think it's going to lose one. It's going to lose one. It's going to lose its single valence electron. And so, and there, and there is lots of reasons for this. Well, not lots of reasons, but very specific reasons that we will talk about later. So right now, all we're doing is we're going to write down these ionic charges. So for group one, their ionic charge, when those atoms, those elements, become ions, they always become ions with a positive one charge. And so what we're going to do here on your periodic table is we're just going to go ahead and write positive one at the top. Okay, so we're gonna, just going to say right here, positive one. Okay, right on your periodic table. All right. Here are the rest. Let's just look at them. Group two, they're going to lose their two valence electrons and get a positive two charge. Group three, they're going to lose their three valence electrons and get a positive three charge. Group four, well, it depends. Positive four, negative four, just leave that one for now. Uh, group five, five valence electrons, they're going to always gain three, give them a negative three charge. Group six, they've got six valence electrons, so they are going to gain two more from another atom to have a total of eight valence electrons, so they will have an overall charge of maybe two. Group seven, seven valence electrons, they will take an electron from somewhere else, another atom that's willing to give it up to have an overall maybe one charge. And group eight, 
they actually have a full valence shell. So they don't ever, ever, these noble gases, in um, normal atmospheric conditions at room temperature, they don't form ions at all. Okay, so let's write this across the top or periodic table. Okay, so group two, we're always going to have a positive two, right? And I'm doing it opposite from here, right? Two plus, plus two. Um, in about a month, we'll talk really about what the, the big difference between doing it one way or the other is, but for now, it's okay. Um, positive three, either positive four or negative four. Positive five. Positive seven, and they don't ever, sorry, they don't ever form ions. They are the noble gases, they are inert. They don't react at room temperature, atmospheric pressure. Okay, so there's that. Today we're talking about ionic compounds. So that is a metal bonded to a non-metal. We will also talk about covalent, co covalent compounds and acids. They've got their own conventions for naming them. But today it's all about ionic compounds. So very important to keep in mind is that ionic compounds must be electrically neutral, meaning that the overall positive charge must be equal to the overall negative charge. You'll see what that means in a minute. We're going to start with ionic binary compounds. For instance, NaCl or CaCl2. All right. Ionic in that metal non-metal, metal non-metal. Non Binary in that it is got um, single cation and a single anion. So how do we name these things? What do we call these things? And why does this one have a subscript of 2? And this chlorine, there is no subscript of 2. What's up with that? All right, let's find out. The cation, cats have paws. Cation is a positive. The cation is named first. The anion comes second. And when we're writing them, the cation comes first, the anion comes second. Cation, anion, cation, anion. Okay, these are ionic compounds, meaning that this has got a positive charge, so this is a positively charged ion, cation, a negatively charged ion, an anion. And the positive and the negative do what? They attract. So these bonds arise, this force of attraction that holds these two things together to form this compound is based on the fact that we've got a positive and a negative that attract one another. Okay, so the cation is written first and the cation is named first. So in this case, the cation is named the same as the element. So Na plus, how do I know that sodium has a positive one charge? Right now, I know because that's what I have written on my periodic table. Group one, sodium, positive one charge always. Calcium, group two, positive two charge always. Dependable ionic charges. So we call the calcium ion, we just say it's calcium, same with sodium. The anion, on the other hand, 
is named by taking the first syllable of the element name and adding I. So for instance, a chlorine ion has got a negative one charge. How do I know it's got a negative one charge? There's chlorine. Oh, what did I do here? Oh, you guys, I made a massive mistake. <laughs> Plus five. <sighs> negative three, negative two, negative one. Did you guys catch that already? Because I'm not going to go back and change this tape. So you may have, you may have caught that already. Okay, sorry to confuse you. Okay, so negative three, negative two, negative one. I'm glad I saw that. All right, and how do I know that oxygen has a negative two charge? It is in group six. It is going to always gain two electrons. So everything in group six is going to have a negative two charge. Okay. So take the first syllable, chlorine. Chlor, we add I. And so we say this is the chloride ion the oxide ion. Cations always keep their regular name. Anions have got the ions. Like your ion quiz today, nitride. Okay. So how do we name this? We call it sodium chloride. How do we name this? We call it calcium. So why does this have a two as a subscript and this doesn't? Sodium, positive one charge. Chloride, positive one charge. Positive one. Negative one, the amount of positive and negative charges equal. And so it's written just like it is. Because remember, in an ionic compound, the thing has to be electrically neutral. The number of positive charges has to equal the number of negative charges. Calcium chloride, on the other hand, calcium has got a positive two. Chloride only has a negative one. So we need two chlorides to balance out the positive two of calcium. Two negatively one charged chlorides to balance out the positive two of calcium. Let's go to the board and do a couple more. anything, let's, let's look at the charges, just for fun. We've got a positive one here, and what about the nitrate? The nitrate is, you know from your ion quiz, a negative one, so good, yes, everything's electrically balanced. And you don't need to check for it, but it's just a little practice here. So we call this thing sodium. And now, you guys, the only way we're going to know this one is because we have it memorized from our ion cards. So, we just take the name of a polyatomic ion. So, we call this thing nitrate. So, it's going to be sodium nitrate. Okay, let's try another one that's a little more tricky. 
copper oxide. But is that all we need? No, it is not. Because copper's a transition metal, it has more than one ionic charge. So that means that we have to distinguish which one it is. Is this copper one or is it copper two? And the only way that we can do that is by going back and doing exactly what we did up here. So I don't know. This is a great unknown to me. Do I put a Roman numeral one or do I put a Roman numeral two? Because for any transition metal that's got more than one ionic charge, we have to say which one it is in its name. So we are going to use the oxide to help us figure that out. Oxide, oxygen, from our periodic table, <clears throat> our periodic table that is now fixed, um, has a negative two charge. So we can use that to figure it out. So my oxide's got a negative two. Now these are in a one to one. It has to be electrically balanced. So if this is negative two, what must this one be? Positive two. It couldn't be positive one, otherwise we'd have a two down here. Okay, so this situation is copper two oxide. We only need the parentheses and the Roman numerals for transition metals that have more than one charge. How will we know? Well, we're trying to memorize them, so that will help us. This takes a lot of practice, so we'll practice in class tomorrow. And that's it, mini ionic compounds. <laughs>